so uh, today let's uh, look at uh, the properties of reflexes so let's go one by one properties of reflexes um one property is uh, the concept of an adequate stimulus so one is adequate stimulus for a reflex as you know for a reflex to be initiated you need a stimulus and this stimulus has to be of adequate strength to produce stimulus suppose uh, let's take an example of the withdrawal reflex and you're walking and there's a pin and so what will happen is that you will take your leg away and what if there's a feather you know what if it's just a feather a feather will not produce the noxious stimuli to uh, produce a produce this uh, withdrawal so a noxious stimuli of adequate strength is needed to start a withdrawal reflex so stimulus has to be of adequate strength so, and it has to be of the right modality so and the modality means pain is one modality touch is another modality so a feather will give you the modality of touch while a pin or a sharp thing will give you the modality of pain so the modality also has to be the right adequate another concept is uh, convergence convergence so let's look at convergence uh, if uh, if many uh, neurons come and you know synapse with one lower motor neuron and finally only a, one muscle will contract so that's like convergence um, another concept is uh, divergence divergence is i think you have seen these concepts in properties of synapses again okay. anyway so divergence is like when uh, one neuron will branch and it will supply two different neurons so you have divergence so there are many projections for a single uh, neuron and so another concept is facilitation so uh, so if uh, <clears throat> a single neuron cannot activate a motor neuron and uh, and multiple neurons are needed to activate it so that's a concept of facilitation another concept is reciprocal inhibition so you know reciprocal inhibition uh, i have given you uh, in our examples we have two examples reciprocal inhibition so uh, two examples uh, and this reciprocal inhibition is a question that has been asked uh, by coas multiple times so again as we always based on and also answer briefly so it's good for you to know that from an exam point of view so reciprocal inhibition one example we have given is when you have a muscle spindle and and that goes to the spinal cord and supplies the lower motor neuron of that particular muscle but it also gives a gives a branch uh, gives a branch and which will supply an inhibitory interneuron and so this inhibitory interneuron so this is this interneuron is inhibitory will supply the the antagonist muscle so this is one example of reciprocal inhibition another example of reciprocal inhibition is anyway uh, so this is one example of reciprocal inhibition so this you have to know it is commonly asked in 
Uh, so we have, uh, I assume that you have learned different types of uh, inhibition, synaptic inhibitions in uh, synapse, like presynaptic inhibition, postsynaptic inhibition, and others. Another concept is summation. So summation can be of two types. Summation can be a, can be a spatial summation or a temporal summation. Spatial summation is when suppose a, one neuron has two ax synapses on it. So in different points of space, uh, it's being stimulated and both of these getting added up. So impulse is getting added up with summation. So this is spatial. Temporal means uh, there's only one snaps. But thing is that the impulse happens twice, close together in time. So so close together in time that they can merge. You know, so that is uh, temporal summation. Temporal means time. So temporal summation. Uh, and seventh concept is occlusion. Occlusion is uh, when suppose uh, two, if you have a pathway like this, so there's an A and B neuron landing on a P and Q neuron. So if you stimulate A pathway and B pathway, A pathway alone you'll get one response, B pathway will get one response. If you stimulate together, you get uh, two responses. But what if there's a convergence happening? So if you stimulate A, and that's going to end in P neuron. If you stimulate A, it will cause one response, B will cause one response. But if you stimulate A and B together, you only get one response. So one response, if you, in this situation, if you stimulate A and B together, you get two responses. And here, if you stimulate A and B together, you're getting only one response. One, resp one stimulus is getting occluded. So this is called occlusion. Okay, so that's occlusion. And <clears throat> Another concept is uh, habituation and sensitization. Let's look at what habituation and sensitization is. Habituation and sensitization. So what is habituation? Habituation is like uh, uh, if you get uh, uh, continuous impulses and you become habituated to it and you don't sense it anymore. Uh, it is something like uh, Adapt, adaptation or something. Habituation means if uh, if continuously stimulate, you get uh, you start to ignore the stimuli. Uh, for example, if uh, your mother is calling you to have food, and she calls you again and again, and after some time you stop listening to it, so that's habituation. Sensitization is uh, when a stimulus is repeatedly applied, the response increases. So it's the opposite of habituation. Suppose your mother is calling you for food, and each time she gives you uh, uh, gives you some pain, like gives you one pinch. Okay, so you, so you will respond faster and faster each time. That is sensitization. So each time the reflex gets stronger, and uh, finally final common pathway so this is another question that has been asked in cohorts as a physiology base final common pathway means see you can see from the different reflexes you study that the lower motor neuron is the one that supplies supplies the muscle so if you want a stretch reflex to happen that has to go through the lower uh, lower uh, lower motor neuron if you want an inverse stretch reflex to happen that has to also to go through the lower motor neuron so any uh, reflex to happen it has to ultimately go through the lower motor neuron so that's called the final uh, common pathway so so lower motor neuron is the final common pathway by which all motor reflexes are controlled so it's the common pathway so let's look at uh, once again 
So first is the adequate stimulus. An adequate stimulus of the correct modality of sufficient strength has to be given to initiate a reflex. And uh, second one is convergence when multiple neurons converge. Divergence is when one neuron divides and this way we can amplify a, um, uh, a reflex. Facilitation is when one uh, reflex helps, one uh, pathway helps another pathway. Uh, respiratory inhibition is when you have a, an interneuron that will inhibit and summation can be spatial by which two parts of uh, one neuron has been stimulated or it can be temporal by which in multiple points of time one neuron has been stimulated then you have occlusion by which when when neurons converge some sub signals are lost occluded habituation is when you get stop responding to a stimuli. Sensitization is when your response increases to a stimuli. And final common pathway is when the lower motor neuron is uh, the final common pathway through which all reflex are integrated. Thank you.